Okay, cameras? Camera Alright, in five, four, three, two, one. Ready? Begin. ArtsBridge is the arts education outreach program here at the University of California, San Diego. We give scholarships to undergraduate and graduate students of the arts in all of the arts disciplines to go into the San Diego public schools, K-12 classrooms, and conduct arts education workshops at no cost to the host schools. Jill Beck and at UC Irvine had this idea to somehow bring arts back to the classrooms and it was a huge, huge success and you can imagine there would be the same kind of demand that we have here for it once other classrooms find out what the other guy had, they want it. And uh, particularly that it was really exciting and fun um, and broke up the school day. And they actually got to learn something different that they're not offering in that classroom. Since that time, she received state funding and it spread to the other UC campuses. In 1998, it came to UCSD. Then in 2001, the fall of 2001, they received a grant from the Department of Education to create a national network of universities that would become um, a, a network for exchange between um, universities of arts education, pedagogy, and um, ideas and innovation in arts education. We uh, mostly cover, uh, well, public schools. There are, there are a handful of private schools who we also cover. Just by the, de by the definition of ArtsBridge and requirements to become ArtsBridge, you have to guarantee that 70, at least 75% of the schools you go into are what's called low-performance schools. And um, that wasn't a challenge, actually, because the more low-performance the school, the more they wanted this opportunity. We see our mission then as to go and begin to fill that gap. It's certainly not the end-all, be-all of arts education, but it is our mission to begin to, to integrate it into the classroom. And our hope is that with each project, something gets left behind so that the teacher, the host teacher, will take up part of that lesson plan in the future. I feel we wanted the scholars to come because we don't do nearly as much art right now as we have done in the past. And my skills are not tremendous in art, although I appreciate it. So it was nice to have someone who's very sophisticated and yet very able to teach children and give them lessons that I perhaps would not be able to do for them. I don't think this is a surprise to anyone. Theater and music, dance and visual arts have not really been primary in uh, the subject areas that we've been exploring within schools. We've been really focused on bringing up, um, bringing our children to become more literate, uh, reading and writing, math skills. Uh, those areas are looked at more critically and the arts have pretty much taken back seat. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we'll call that the instrument map. Arts education is important for a number of reasons. It promotes creativity, um, innovative problem solving, thinking outside of the box, self-reliance, self-expression, self-esteem, independence. Arts education can be connections and context for cross-curricular topics like math, science, literacy, um, social studies. And in, most importantly, in my opinion, arts education is a balance to the standards based, the, sta the standardized testing based curriculum that is currently threatening um, students' individuality and their critical thinking skills. It's different because we normally do like reading, writing, and math, and this is art. You were a good class today, you had a good spirit, everybody participated, everybody sang. You did a good job. Give yourselves a hand. The teachers have huge demands on what all they need to teach every day. We have a three-hour literacy block and it's all mapped out for them as far as, okay, what kinds of things they need to cover. The same is true of math. There are requirements for each subject area. and. Uh, for the most part, our, I believe our teachers feel guilty because some of the subject areas then uh, get short shrift because there's just not time in the day. And you can go a little bit closer in. 
cross-curricular integration of music or, or the arts or um, theater with other curricular topics like math or science or social studies is becoming more and more important. So the more we can kind of um, layer the learning, the easier it's going to be for teachers to actually integrate arts education into their school day. And the other piece of that is when you're making connections and context between subjects, it's, it's better learning. What ArtsBridge does is it tries to bolster the education the students are getting with visits from guest le uh, lecturers and performers so that what the students are already learning has more relevance or has a brighter sheen to it. Uh, I, I like to dance, and I like to move, and I, and I like to sing. And so the trumpet was a way for me to express it differently. We select scholars based on their academic achievement, their faculty references, their past teaching experience. And we pair those selected scholars, those students, with teachers, host teachers, who have also sent in applications or request forms. And the projects are 16 to 20 contact hours in the classroom. That usually breaks down into one to two hours sessions that meet once or twice a week. Uh, and sometimes that finishes within the course of a quarter, sometimes it extends a little bit beyond. And we're going to go through and I want you guys to make positive comments only about somebody else's work. Uh, our project for Miss Cipher's fourth grade class, it was a fourth and fifth grade class, and what we did is we were painting self-portraits and portraits. And in addition to that, what we were really focusing on is um, characteristics or good characteristics and what makes a good person. We have been learning um, how to mix colors. We've been doing um, self-portraits like drawing of ourselves, and now we're we're starting to do um, write about famous people, and we're and I'm doing Thurgood Marshall. This project that we're doing with the portraits and self-portraits incorporated a lot into writing in English, because what we had them do was after they finished painting or while they were painting, um, they were supposed to write a paragraph or two paragraphs about this person and they were all supposed to be reading about this person and researching about them. And because we'd done biographies and they'd read and done posters and made uh, replicas of their particular person, they had a great deal of knowledge of the people they had done. So it tied beautifully in and is a wonderful year-end unit for us. Table one. Bring your sawing up. The whole table. Where is mommy? Where is mommy? At the store, at the store. Well, the project that Nina and I are doing is entitled Mapping the Beat, and it is funded by the National Geographic Society of America in addition to ArtsBridge. And because of that um, collaboration, we're combining music with geography and we're teaching geographic concepts through music. So we look at the different groups that have come into the United States by 1865, and look at the music that they brought, and when they meet each other, how the music interacts, and how the music changes once it gets here. Our work has been separated into different kinds of activities for the students. Sometimes Nina and I do small lectures uh, with video, images and recordings and pictures. Sometimes we'll bring in guest performers who will uh, play for the students and talk about themselves and their own history and what traditions they fit into. And sometimes the students work on projects which are based on the lectures or based on the work that the visiting performers do. It isn't um, a program where a visiting artist comes in, the teacher sits back and grades papers or catches up on work or even just observes. It's a very participatory kind of situation where the teacher on a daily basis needs to be teaching about that same area of the world so that when the teaching artist comes the next time, they don't have to review material. They can go right on to the next thing because the kids have daily been getting the information. Can you play 
you follow it? Yeah. yeah. Good. So. If someone is like different from me and then they, they're from another country and they play something else, then I could know that that's what they do and that's their culture. You're like having fun while like listening to music and playing it and you're still learning about it. So it was nice that this has been, this has been going on over the year in different classrooms because we get an idea of what works and what doesn't work. And as the year goes on, and as this project goes on in different, in future years, then we'll get a better idea even more of what works and it'll just keep getting better. We thought it would be interesting to find a little about, yeah. That's okay, just keep on going. We thought it'd be interesting to find out a little more about these programs. My project is a little bit different from some of the other projects. I go into uh, Westview Elementary School and I teach a news production class, but instead of going into a class that's already there, um, actually the kids had to audition for, for to, to, to get into my class. I teach them uh, technical things about, you know, video equipment, camera, editing, that kind of sort of thing, and uh, also the uh, reporting part, you know, writing stories, um, and also uh, just being in front of the camera, trying to coach them uh, how, to, how to speak and how to be comfortable in front of the camera. I like doing, like, the interviews, working with people. Like, I do express myself, but now in front of the camera, like, I feel more comfortable. That was good. That was good? Why, why was it good? It'll help with the kids. Once they start writing their stories, it'll help them really think how they want to film their story. So they'll be using their writing that they're getting taught in their classes and integrating it into the workshops. So using the written pieces they do outside and using it to film in, in the workshops. So Gin's project provided an opportunity for them to apply other skills that they had learned either in, in their literacy and writing blocks, um, in, in formulating their stories, or in their computer training that they had had, and putting them to use towards this end goal of a news report. And, and Gen was facilitating sort of the whole coming together of, of that. What is that? What is that? Coming into Arts Bridge, um, I, I never taught, so I didn't know how difficult it was going to be. Okay. It is so much more different um, teaching, teaching all this material. It is a lot different when you're on the other side trying to explain how a camera works to seven, eight, nine-year-olds and making sure that they are understanding uh, what you're trying to inform them about. The banjo is a stringed instrument that is related to the Ngoni of Western Africa. The students, from what I know, don't really work with music very much in the classroom. And it's really hard to work with students who don't have an educational background in music because you can't teach that to them. You can only add to it. Some of the challenges were that there's always some students who are less interested than others and you have to find ways to motivate them. They're really different, right? You hear that? They're really different. Very interesting and how all the different people or the artists that play the music come in and they try to teach you so they can inspire you maybe to play music when you get older. We write journals and we keep track of everything we do. So after every lesson, we're writing journals about what went well, what didn't work well. From class to class, I can see you know, what went wrong and how can I can improve myself, or um, what didn't work and how I can work it better next time and the next time after that. So I've, by the last time that I taught it, I would go in and I would know what was going to work and what wasn't going to work. Another goal that we had was to create a program that we could give to teachers when we were done so that they could do this work on their own. And part of our ArtsBridge project is creating a packet that we can distribute to schools online or in hard copy that consists of a series of one-hour lectures or programs that the teachers can incorporate into their lesson plans whenever it fits in. 
all of those lesson plans then are compiled and cleaned up at the end of the project and turned into me and we give one copy to I, I keep one copy and we give one copy to the host teacher so that they have a full record of what happened in their classroom should they want to reference it in the future or if they need to show to administration that you know we're meeting the standards this is how I'm learning a great deal about how to teach art I'm toward the end of my career, but I have not really had the training that she's giving the children. So the learning has extended. I keep telling Miley how much I've learned from her. So it's really permeated the entire room, including me. I would be learning because it's a new teacher, and that teacher would learn different things, and that she would teach a different way, he or she. When you smile, and I smile, so like when I smile, right, then my mouth goes like this, right, and it gets bigger here, but the top also gets maybe flatter. One of the things we try to do in our classes is use different ways of teaching material and give the students different ways of interacting with the material. It's not very useful just to tell them things and they listen to you, but it's also not very useful for them to read things or just to write things or just to be creative. You have to try a lot of different teaching methods and see what works for each student. For each student it's going to be different and the balance is to figure out how to get all the students interested in the material at the same time. It's very easy to see that when our children are involved in drama or singing or music or dance it calls on a different set of skills and it also reaches not just to kind of this average middle child that already does fairly well in school, but it reaches those ends where we have a child over here, say, that is very shy and is reticent to volunteer information. And then on this side, we've got the child that's very active and always wanting to be on stage. And generally, those uh, kids are, are not the ones we get to on a daily basis, try as we might. The art seems, to, from my observation, seem to speak to, to both of those kinds of kids. Some of the best moments working with the students have been when the students who are seen in class as not very good students, the students who are seen as behind everyone else, really shine when they get to play music. Um, I mean, we could have done these in watercolor and we could have done them on the same paper, but we want you to get used to using different kinds of paints. Sometimes it wasn't just about drawing or about the creating work. Sometimes it was just even like a, a self-confidence issue. When I would first go in, you know, they'd be like, I can't do this. And we had a rule that you couldn't say can't or you couldn't put, say anything negative about your work or anybody else's work, that you could only make positive comments. And I think that was one of the things I really try to stick to, is that you would always think positively about your work. Hello everyone, I am Jason Gross, Red the correspondent. They're very confident before we put the camera in front of them. And then once we, when we place camera you know, in front, the, in front of them, the kids did uh, feel a little nervous, and they weren't able to do the reports as smoothly as they were before without the camera. But with, but with some practice, uh, with the rehearsals, uh, they've they've become more comfortable in front of the camera. Congratulations, Mrs. Gonzalez, on being chosen Teacher of the Year. Thank you. Well, we have a few questions today. The changes I've seen in their personalities, a lot more confident, a lot more confident speaking into the camera, interviewing other people, just their presence. ArtsBridge is also an opportunity for K-12 pupils to learn about a process. It's not just like it appears, it's step by step by step. I think um, what they do learn is patience. Kids with this project especially, uh, because it is very technical, it takes a lot of time to learn um, all the information that I give them. So that means you need to paint all the skin that you have on your, on your painting, okay? I think they notice the art. I think they're more interested in the kinds of things that are in our social studies book, the artwork in our reading programs, I think they're far more interested in this because of what they've done. They also have to be very focused on detail, and I think this has helped tremendously to be focused on the details. 
sketching, um, texture, and patience. Patience about art I haven't learned yet. You know, we're not, we're not out necessarily to get a bunch of new artists. Um, but it has, but we do. I mean, there are a lot of pupils in the classroom who look and say, hey, these are grown-up people and they're actually studying art, you know, as a, as a, real, uh, as a, as a real pursuit. It's nice for them to meet someone who's in college because elementary school children don't meet that many college students. And sometimes I answer their questions about what college is and how I got from where they are to where I am. It's really fun and you get to like interact with other kids, like just different like vocabulary and just having fun with the camera so you can like know how it is to be like a newscaster. There are a couple of kinds of assessment that we do. There's an empirical kind of assessment to actually see um, through vocabulary tests, let's say, that you'll give a vocabulary test of certain words that are going to be introduced to these children during that 16-hour visit. And you do a pre-test and a post-test. And the post-test shows a huge, uh, as you can imagine, a huge um, increase in the child's knowledge specifically of these words and what they mean. We also have built into the ArtsBridge process a fairly extensive evaluation phase. So we're getting evaluations from the mentors who observe in the classroom, from the host teachers who have been a part of every session. They're required to be in the classroom during every session, so they're seeing what's happening and how the scholars performed and how the project has panned out. Um, and the scholars are um, turning in evaluations as well. Hey, use this one. ArtsBridge has had a really big impact on my career goals. My goals are kind of more towards the arts. And now after teaching with ArtsBridge for about a year and a half, I really found that I really love working with kids. I, I like teaching them art. And I, I love being there and being able to make, even if it's a little difference, I love that feeling, knowing that I taught them something or that I made them feel proud of themselves. Well, I never thought of wanting to be a teacher, but it has definitely become a possibility. It is great to work with the kids and, and seeing that you know, they get excited about something that you, you taught them. Working with fifth graders is a much more interactive process. It's a lot more reciprocal. That I've been spending as much time listening to the students as talking to the students. Okay, the second thing is what? ArtsBridge is a win-win-win um, situation for the teachers, for the scholars, for the students. But I would, I would put out there that there's a fourth win, and that, that is to the university that we are putting role models into, university role models into classrooms where students probably won't otherwise be considering college as part of their future. Not only is it great that UCSD is doing this kind of outreach for us, but the fact that I think our students need to um, take pride in the fact that this institution exists, as well as our teachers. So I think for them also, it's very good exposure, because if they didn't happen to go to this school, they need to know about all that it offers as well. Any of you know anything about detention? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give them a hand. So an ArtsBridge scholarship is $1,000. Then we also provide a $100 supply and travel allowance to the scholar. And the faculty mentors are paid $200. So for $1,300, we're providing professional development to teachers. We're providing arts education to 30 or more K-12 students. And we are providing a scholarship to help defray the cost of tuition and books and um, whatnot to a university undergraduate or graduate student. The rug was kind of pulled out from under it with the budget crisis, the recession, and, and such uh, this last year. We were able to secure funds from the state that would cover the staff position, but we got no funds to cover anything else. So then we had staff position, and a lot of willing scholars, some very hungry classroom teachers, but no funds to bring the scholars in. The 85% cut that we sustained over the last fiscal year 
forced us to be that much more cost effective, but also to, to look to diversifying our funding base. It's such an easy project to pitch. I mean, it's, it's, so, it's so valuable on all levels, all fronts. And who can say no to those kids? The benefit of arts education, I, th I think, is priceless. Early on, you have to have the kids have some kind of way to express what goes on in their mind. And with arts education, it just gives them like different kind of ways to do that. Working with the students over an extended period of time, like we do in ArtsBridge, gives us more of an advantage in relating our material to what they're doing. It's somewhere in between regular school and a concert in an auditorium that it has the benefits of both. It's something new and it's something unusual in the classroom, but in the same way it becomes routine and it becomes something that you can depend, on, depend upon for teaching. It's especially important with the current system of education where so much emphasis is devoted to math and reading, but there's not a lot of time for other things. And any time that you can get is really precious. And without ArtsBridge, there would only be less time being spent on, on the arts. And I don't think that's a good thing. I would hope that they would take away from this, or after I left, and they were on their own. I want them to use their imagination and really be creative. And like, you don't always have to be right or you don't have to be wrong. You can kind of just use whatever you want and kind of really take chances and explore new things. For me, ArtsBridge has been an incredible opportunity. It has really opened my eyes to the value of arts education, that it's not some periphery subject that can be taken or left. It's got to be integral in the curriculum to develop whole people. You're more confident in yourself and you're, um, you like answer more questions and stuff. Because I want to be an actor when I grow up, so it's going to help me a lot. It helped me to do that thing, kind of stuff. think stuff is fun and so they can probably enjoy this. I know I did.